Hello, and welcome to the Knit and Grace podcast. Let's talk about the tendril sweater. And welcome or welcome back if you are a returning viewer. If you are new here, my name is Mia and I'm the maker behind Knit and Grace. And today I'm going to bring you a little bit of a different um, video for the channel. And it is going to be a project spotlight. So in the past when I've done sort of project spotlights, I've made them more like a making journal type where I have B-roll and I walk you through the process of my actually making the project. And this time, honestly, I just, you know, didn't get around to filming any of the making process or um, the, you know, sort of B-roll that I would have wanted to make a journal. So I'm just going to have a little bit of a sit down video to highlight a recently finished object. And um, the reason also that I am highlighting this object is it because, <laughs> oh my gosh, we're already off to a stellar start. It's because it is actually the project that I made as part of my Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool make-along that I hosted over on Instagram. So I wanted to sort of walk you through the project, what I made, um, modifications, so kind of the same things that you would um, expect from my podcast episode, just maybe a little bit more in detail. And then at the end of the video, I will announce the winners of the make-along. So jumping right in, I am wearing my finished sweater. So this is the sweater. And I will also insert pictures that I took of myself wearing this sweater. And it is the Tendril Sweater by Sophie Hemmings of The Knit Pearl Girl. And this is a project that I recently tested for Sophie and I finished. Um, I believe it was released um, the weekend the last weekend when you're seeing this. So I believe it was released like on Friday the 27th or something like that. So it is now out in the world and I am very happy to spotlight this project and sort of talk about my testing and making process of the project. So what I'm gonna do is I will pull up um, the sort of my Ravit app so you all can see the project since it is live on Ravelry. And so what I plan on talking about is just giving you a little bit of a brief overview on the pattern, what my modifications were for my test, and then I will announce the winners of the make along. Okay, so I have the app up and I'm gonna go ahead and show you some pictures of Sophie's project. And as you can see, this is a drop shoulder construction and it features this lightning bolt detail. There is both a crew neck option as well as the V-neck option, which you can see here. And these are several of the samples that she made. You can also knit it with a split hem, which I chose to do. And there's also a regular hem option, which Sophie is modeling here. And so, yeah, it's a really, really nice basic pattern. I'll go ahead and show you the details. So with regard to the pattern itself, it uh, retails for seven uh, British pounds. 
and um, it is a knit pullover and it was just released. The suggestion, suggested yarns for this are Sadness Garn, Pierre Ghent, or Knitting for All of Heavy Merino. Um, essentially sort of a heavy DK, slight worsted weight paired with a silk mohair. So um, she's also suggesting the Sadness Garn Tin Silk Mohair as well as the Knitting for All of Soft Silk Mohair. I'm not sure why this it says that the yarn weight is DK because it's definitely not. It's more of a, a worsted Aran weight. And the gauge is 17 stitches to 24 rows in stockinette stitch. And the yardage is going to be anywhere between 1859 to 3062 yards, uh, depending on the size that you choose, with your gauge needle being a US 8 or 5 millimeter needle. There are 12 sizes available, and so here we have the description of the sweater itself, and it is described as a slightly oversized drop shoulder sweater with a lightning bolt cables. Tendril in Manx Gaelic is the Manx Gaelic word for lightning on the front panel. The sweater is worked top down, both flat and in the round, and the fit is very relaxed and slouchy, and the sleeves have a slight taper with a loose fit around the wrists. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different modifications for this pattern. Um, there are, again, there's the crew neck, there's the V-neck option, there's a regular hem, and there is a, um, and there is a split hem. And so for my specific um, one, I chose to do this crew neck with a split hem. Um, additionally, uh, additional details to know about the pattern is that it is, um, the drop shoulder does have armhole shaping. So it is um, not only size inclusive, but it's also keeping in mind that, you know, shoulders aren't a sort of proportionally larger on larger busts. So there is armhole shaping to make sure that the drop shoulder is fitting at the correct spot for each of the sizes as they go up. So I think there's like on the smaller sizes, there's actually decreasing on the larger sizes, there's increasing. And then like the middle sizes, there might not be as much shaping depending on, you know, sort of the difference there. So there is um, that in there that it will help sort of shape very well around the shoulders without you having sort of a really droopy um, drop shoulder. And additionally, um, the pattern does include very detailed schematics, or, or I should say, does it does not include a schematic picture in the pattern page itself, um, but in the pattern page, Sophie does include very detailed measurements, so you can really look at what you're getting into before you actually buy the pattern, which I always appreciate. Um, you know, if there isn't schematics, at least you know detailed measurements of how the project is constructed, so that I know what I'm buying before I get into it. So in terms of my um, garment, I will tell you how I chose to go about my sizing. So I chose to knit the sixth size, which is a 50 inch circumference of around the bust, which is actually smaller than the pattern recommends for my bust. So for my bust, which is about 46, you know, to 47 inches, depending on the day, the undergarments, etc. Um, it recommended a size nine, which is a 58 inch bust. And frankly, for me, I just find that to be too much ease. Um, personally, I believe that like extremely oversized garments looks nicer on smaller bodies. But as bodies are, you know, get larger, that kind of amount of ease just doesn't make for a very well fitting garment. So that is why I chose to size down. And so that gives me, you know, sort of the perfect amount of ease that I was looking for and actually the perfect fit. Um, a number of people when I when they saw the picture just commented on how well it fits, which I believe it does. Um, 
And so another um, modification, um, or I guess not modification, but a feature of the pattern is the lightning bolt placement. There are two different placements. There is sort of like the mid shoulder, and then there's one that's like closer to the drop shoulder that you can place the lightning bolt. I chose to go with the mid shoulder placement, which is, I believe, what Sophie's first sample had. Um, additionally, in terms of shaping, as if you have been following me for a while, you know that I will often add in bust darts depending on the pattern. For this pattern, I chose to not add in bust darts because I was going with a high-low hem, so I did want sort of that high-low feel, and so the fact that the front was going to be more cropped than the back was not a problem for me. It was actually exactly what I was looking for, so I didn't make any modifications there. I knit the pattern pretty much exactly as written, with the exception of having to shorten the body and the sleeves because I am petite. Um, I am 4'11 and a half. So as I mentioned, the pattern does feature the armhole shaping, which helps to not have it be overly baggy. And I did shorten the body and the sleeves. So on the body, I knit my body for nine inches before starting the split hem detail. And then for my sleeves, I believe I knit them for 13 inches before starting the ribbing. And so my sleeves are a perfect bracelet length. Um, and so as you can see, as I have, it rides up just a tiny bit since I have my elbows um, bent which is actually how I like it because when I'm like typing or writing I don't like anything on my wrist and then when I have it out it is the perfect bracelet length right at my wrist so it is yeah it's really great um it does feature this fold uh this folded collar and it does have the folded collar feature in the v-neck version as well um so i knit that exactly to as it called for and i did actually end up working the tubular bind off on all of the finishings um which sometimes i do and sometimes i don't depending on how i'm feeling because i don't want to get too fussy so in terms of my yarn, and so I want to talk about that because part of my sort of make-along process or the reason why I wanted to host the make-along is I wanted to highlight this really great all-natural non-super wash budget yarn. So, you know, I definitely love my luxury yarns, as you all know, if you have been here for a while. But every so often, you know, you just you just want to stick to a budget for one reason or another. Or, I mean, quite frankly, it's just a really great yarn to work with. And the yarn that I'm talking about is Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool. And not only is it a great yarn to work with, but it's also extremely accessible, um, at least here in the US, where I can go to any big box store and pick up some yarn, you know, where with my luxury yarns, either I have to wait when yarn shops are open and they have limited hours, or I have to order them online and then they have to be shipped to me. So it's really nice when I want a quick, you know, simple project, I can just hop to my nearest Joanne or Michaels and pick up some yarn, which is really great. So in terms of the yarn, or, or, you know, the amount of yarn that I used, I use Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool paired with Drops Kid Silk. And so I did the Drops Kid Silk. Um, well, personally, I do like it. I find it to still be very soft. Um, but also I wanted to go with a budget uh, silk mohair as well. So I ended up using 2.3 skeins of Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool. And so I'm gonna count the cost for the entire three skeins because I had to buy the entire three skeins. And I did have coupon codes when I purchased these. So for the three skeins, it came out to $27.98. And then the drops I bought from Wool Warehouse in the UK. And this one was not on sale. I had just missed the sale. I was so bummed. I had actually put them in my checkout and everything and then just like completely forgot about it. And then when I came back a couple days later, the sale was over. So I paid full price, which was still 
it's still very inexpensive. I think the sale was like, you know, maybe like three pounds or something like that. So definitely there was a big difference, but it is what it is. Um, I ended up using 4.4 skeins of the Drops Kid Silk. Um, so for the five skeins, not including shipping, I'm not counting shipping in this, it was about 27, 23 US dollars, which is, um, it was actually 22 uh, British pounds. So that is a total of $55.21 for a mohair sweater. And so that that's actually part of the reason why I wanted to do this video is not only to highlight um, Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool, but because I know that pairing, you know, like a non-superwash or even a superwash yarn, which I, I actually like to do if I have like superwash yarn, I'll pair it with mohair because it it takes away like that kind of like slippery feel and it doesn't um, allow the yarn to bloom as much but you know pairing yarn with mohair right now is the it trend amongst us knitters and that means that it can get pretty expensive especially if you're talking about you know sort of um, hand dyed yarns or like small batch yarns or things like that so this was a sweater that I wanted to make on a budget intentionally and still highlight that you can still knit with your mohair you can still knit with your non superwash fibers and still have a nice luxurious sweater for a very reasonable price and quite frankly, I think this is an extremely reasonable price, especially because I wouldn't be able to go into the store and get a sweater like this for $55, much less one that fits me perfectly to my body. So really excited about that. Um, and yeah, I'm really loving how this sweater has turned out. I've already worn it a couple of times and I'm really excited to continue wearing it this winter season. And so now I want to talk about the um, make along. And so while I talk about the make along, um, I'll go ahead and have some pictures of folks that um, submitted their finished objects to the make along here so that you can see those. But essentially, the make along ran from August 1st until October 28th. And the rules were simply that you needed to make something in Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool. So it could be knitted, it could be crocheted it could be anything that you wanted to make um I know that even um you know someone f chose to felt or two people actually chose to felt this is a really great felting yarn and actually I think that's like what it's mainly known for or had been traditionally known for here in the U.S. Um, and you know you just had to finish a project it didn't have to be a sweater it, it just needed to be something using the yarn and enter it into the FO thread and you would be entered into winning one of the prizes. Now, I will say, I, I do have the yarn. I'm still working on sewing up the bag, which after I film this video and um, <laughs> upload it, I will finish uh, sewing that bag. But the there is a grand prize winner and then there's three runners up. And so initially I had intended the grand prize winner to be within the U.S. and Canada because shipping is a bit expensive these days and so sort of to cut down on the shipping costs. And then I opened it up, you know, internationally. If anyone wanted to join in, they could get a copy of some digital knitting patterns. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we had any international entries um, or, you know, I'm sort of counting Canada in the national entries since we we ship to each other very uh, easily and readily. Um, so we didn't have any entries outside of the US and Canada. So, you know, the, still, the prizes will still be the same. It'll just be everyone is within the US and Canada, I guess. So the first prize winner is going to get four skeins of Lime Brand Fisherman's Wool in the color Brown Heather. It's currently bagged up um, because I did order it and it was shipped to me and I didn't want to take it out of the bag and have crinkles and things like that. I just wanted to ship it out pristinely. So um, you will be getting four skeins of Lime Brand Fisherman's Wool in the color Brown Heather along with the town bag. Um, that I will be sewing up and the winner is Claudia Campa and this is her winter ranunculus that she knit for the make-along and you are the first prize winner. 
Okay, so the next three prizes, you all will receive a digital pattern from Sophie's web shop. So you will just let me know which pattern uh, you would like to receive and I will be sending that to you. Um, so the next winner, uh, which is the first winner of a digital pattern, is Happy Star Love, and this is the project that they made for the Make Along, this beautiful, beautiful blanket, or blanket shawl, I guess. It is a blanket um, by Jared Flood. It's just absolutely stunning, and yeah very excited for you definitely be sure to reach out and i should say everyone should reach out to me via email at knitandgrace at gmail.com um and so i can get everything sorted for you the next winner is my friend kendra of the balance skein super excited for you so again kendra you will win a digital copy from sophie's web shop and Kendra actually test knitted a shawl for Kadri and this is her lovely shawl and this is I believe in the natural brown color because this is a color that I have in my stash and I'm actually planning on knitting something up in the new year so I'm really excited about that. So congrats Kendra. And the last winner of a digital pattern from Sophie's web shop is Floridian Knits. And they knit this beautiful, beautiful Miles shirt jacket by Ozetta. And they chose to knit theirs in the, I think it's called the Birch Tweed color, which always sells out. Um, and I don't even know that I can get it at like Joanne anymore. I would have to buy it directly from Lion Brand if I wanted this color, but it is a color that I want in my stash again. I knit with it many, many years ago. And this Miles shirt jacket in this yarn looks absolutely stunning and now I'm just like oh my god I need to make my own because it is just so amazing and you will also win a pattern from Sophie's web shop so the four of you please just reach out to me again to my gmail it's knitandgrace at gmail.com I will not be reaching out to you I will not reach out to any of the winners asking anything of you or anything like that please reach out to me with your contact information so that I can send you the information. So um, Claudia, I will need your address and shipping information so I can get your physical prize out to you. And then um, the other three winners can let me know either their Ravelry usernames or how to best send them their um, digital copy of the pattern and actually tell me which pattern from Sophie's web shop you are interested in having me send you. So yeah a short one today i hope that you enjoyed this type of video um if you did please go ahead and give it a like as always if you enjoyed this video and all of my other content please consider subscribing and clicking that bell uh, button so that you're notified every time i post a video and i will see you in my next video which will be my monthly podcast episode until then, please continue to take care of yourselves and each other. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.